Hello, I'm Veronica and I am the Commercial Contracts and Risk Manager for the Environment Agency. I was a member of the ICE Carbon Project, Procurement and Contracts, and I'm one of the members of the NEC Climate Change Working Group for Option X29. In this video, we will be sharing our experience from our adoption of the Climate Change Clause, heavily based on X29, through our collaborative delivery framework, procurement, and services and works, how it has reduced our own climate change impact and how you can start your own carbon journey, helping to accelerate our transition towards being net zero by 2045. Hello, I'm Mark Haggart and I'm a commercial manager in the Environment Agency. The Environment Agency Capital Programme delivers flood resilience and protection to communities at risk. Our current six-year programme runs from 2021 to 2027, and it will spend £5.2 billion protecting an additional 200,000 properties across England, delivered by the Environment Agency and other flood risk management authorities. The programme is thus at the forefront of adapting to climate change impacts, whilst needing to reduce emissions from the process of constructing new infrastructure. Our approach to reducing emissions has been guided by PASS 2080, which is a global standard to manage carbon in buildings and infrastructure development guidance. It sets out how carbon management is a business change in leadership, skills and ways of working across both the client and supply chain. A summary of the Environment Agency carbon management process is set out in this infographic showing how carbon management measures have become part of the standard project stages and decision-making, including setting budgets, appraisal of options, assessing and optimizing designs, and tracking resource use during construction. A cornerstone of this approach is having a common measurement system for emissions using a whole life carbon assessment process and data that supports carbon reduction opportunities the measures within each contract stage of a project are based on the results of whole life carbon assessments that are produced at each project stage by delivery partners, but in collaboration with Environment Agency appointed carbon specialists. Hello, my name is Andy Waring and I work as Atkins Realysis Framework Manager for our work under the Collaborative Delivery Framework. The 14 EA areas are arranged into six hubs these hub teams consist of client, consultant and contractor who plan and deliver the flood and coastal erosion risk management program in a collaborative and integrated way. Operating this model as designers, we follow a carbon reduction hierarchy from concept design to detail design. First, considering what flood risk may exist at allocation, and then how as designers, how we may address that. This follows the principle in PAS 2080, carbon management and infrastructure. We don't wait until the detailed design stage to reduce carbon in our designs. We first think about whether any and what infrastructure is needed. So, build nothing, build less, build clever. On several jobs, we're looking at the use of natural flood management and software engineering solutions to deliver effective flood risk management. For instance, on the Chippenham Maven project, here we are working to remove an existing radial gate and weir structure and restore around two to three kilometres of upstream watercourse while maintaining amenity value by building rock cascade features. This will not only reduce flood risk and carbon associated with the failure of the aging structure, but will provide wider benefits such as fish and eel passage, delivery of biodiversity net gain, whilst reducing the carbon cost of future maintenance of the river channel in this location. Since 2019, the Environment Agency have had an organisational commitment to stop contributing to climate change through our own operational emissions. In autumn 2019, we stated our ambition to be a net zero organisation by 2030. Half of our carbon emissions come from construction of flood, our flood defences. This is equivalent to 148,000 tonnes of carbon per year. Our flood defences consist of construction materials such as concrete and steel, and these make up half our carbon footprint. This is where we use our commercial and procurement approach as a lever to reduce carbon emission. In 2023, we needed to extend our collaborative delivery framework 
our framework to procure professional services and engineering construction contracts. We took this opportunity to include a climate change clause heavily based on the NEC X29. The differences between those clauses were driven by the need to declare our commercial clauses in advance of the release of the climate change clause and also that we wish to focus in the first instance on carbon reduction. We used the same commercial methodology and also included a performance table to measure performance against a baseline target and set reward or pain on the basis of the actual performance. As we were integral to the Climate Change Clause Working Group and the ICE Carbon Group, we were fully aligned with industry best practice findings at the time. We also used the expertise of colleagues on that group to make sure that we were aligned. The Environment Agency has representatives in the NEC Climate Change Working Group to allow us to share our experience in using the clause to reduce carbon emissions. We do this because we want to accelerate industry's efforts to reduce carbon emissions and the impact of climate change Starting a carbon reduction journey means requires three main ingredients. That all parties collaborate, that there is a common tool and a method to capture carbon data before, during and after a contract, and simple pragmatic approaches and processes, people, technology and information. Let's find out more. I am Luxby and I work for the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs under DEFRA Group Commercial. We know that the biggest influence in reducing our environmental footprint starts at the very beginning of the whole life cycle of the infrastructure and that is where commercial can help. In the EA, the Climate Change Clause provides an incentive for delivery partners where they can benefit financially from reporting carbon emissions, less than that agreed initially. Our project manager's role is to act as contract service managers and monitor that carbon reporting from the supplier. This means it requires a fully collaborative effort that combines carbon reporting input from our delivery partners, the sustainability team, the commercial team, carbon specialists, um, project and program delivery teams, sponsors of our projects and flood asset end users. Since 2023, 221 NEC4 contracts, both professional services and engineering construction contracts were let, including the climate change clause. These contracts amount to a value of approximately 220 million pounds. Our position is that carbon incentivization is included in all contracts as a default. However, there are some exceptions, contracts for mapping and modeling and contracts of less than 250,000 pounds in value, such as early supplier engagement and maintenance and operational contracts. The reason is that a proportional approach is intended. I'd like to share some reflections on how we implemented the climate change clause and some lessons learned. We started discussing our implementation of the climate change clause in December 2022 with our delivery partners as part of the agreement to extend one of our main programme delivery frameworks. They were all supportive of the principles involved and understood the need for such a mechanism. Everybody understands that it's a climate crisis and that we need to take action now. Our partners were appreciative also of the potential for additional reward but most of the discussions revolved around the potential risk if carbon targets were exceeded. Partners also needed to explore clients' ability to set the correct targets and arrangements for measuring carbon on live projects. In hindsight, it may have been an option to set up the process including monitoring and measuring arrangements just as a pilot for a year and then implement financial pain or gain share when all parties were comfortable with the approach. Finally, to ensure that our contract users have knowledge of how the climate change clause mechanism works, we delivered a series of training sessions. These were aimed at two main groups, general project team members and NEC ECC project managers. The training covered 
general carbon management principles, climate change clause fundamental principles, and contract management process for NEC4, PSC and ECC contracts. Hi, I'm Mark Cronshaw, Framework Director for Volkstevin, one of the Environment Agency's CDF delivery partners. For me, given the backdrop of a climate emergency, use of the climate change clause is hugely exciting. It encourages delivery partners like us to react and invest in low carbon alternatives and innovation. It introduces focus around better understanding and driving down carbon within each stage of a project through design and into construction. As a result, the climate change clause has created an environment where healthy conversations around carbon are being allowed to flourish. It has made us think of carbon as a new currency, arguably as valuable as pounds and pence. We are not just thinking of our own carbon footprint either, but that of our supply chain too. Many organisations only measure themselves on scope one and two carbon and don't include the supply chain outside of their control. However, the climate change clause adopted by the EEA forces us all to look at the wider picture. The EEA now have several flood and coastal projects that are actively monitoring and reducing their carbon footprint through use of the climate change clause, with all delivery partners openly sharing their ideas. One of the good examples of where climate change clause is driving value is on one of our projects in Greater Manchester, the Littleborough Flood Risk Management Scheme, where we save 2,400 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent off the back of a single decision made by the team. By better understanding the cost of carbon, emissions were reduced from the agreed carbon target 14,500 tonnes down to 12,100 tonnes of CO2 equivalent when the team switched to the use of low carbon steel sheet piles, which use recycled steel and electric arc furnaces powered by renewable energy as part of the manufacturing process. Now that we have shared our experience with you, I hope it is evidence that it requires all parties to fully work together to achieve the goal. This is not easy, but it is worthwhile. Having a common purpose of such urgency has really forged our collaborative approach. I hope you recognise that progress is possible and we ask you, what will be your first step towards reducing the climate change impacts of your projects? You can find out more information about NEC's Option X29 at www.necontract.com forward slash X29.